Hey guys, so I want to do a quick update. Now, I'm going to zoom out real quick just so you can get a quick view of this for this video. So this is my Chromebook that I purchased off of eBay, I believe it was. So it's an Acer Chromebook. I believe it costs like $35 or so. I, um, I've done another video just on this Chromebook. I've done a few on this so far. Um, I've, I've done a, a video just overviewing Chrome OS and the Chromebook. And I've done one uh, where I showed you how I installed Linux on it. I installed Ubuntu for that first video. And I did a, another video showing you how I had uh, Arch Linux on this. And then I hadn't, um, I haven't done any updates on this specific, on what I'm doing with this Chromebook since. And so I just wanted to come back because it's been such a long time. I wanted to come back and do a quick bit update just to show you what I've been doing with this uh, Chromebook um, more recently. So I have actually installed Peppermint OS on this and uh, you can see the screen is flashing a little bit. The monitor isn't actually doing that. Like you can't see that flashing with your eyes. It only shows up on the camera. Interesting thing, I just recorded another video with an old, uh, like a really ancient MacBook Air and I did not have that issue with that. So better screen on the MacBook Air. Something to think about if you're thinking about old, uh, old MacBook Airs versus uh, you know, a Chromebook or something. So, uh, you know, a little diversion here, but um, yeah, just bought this MacBook Air, did a little uh, video on it. I did a few videos on this, but uh, installed Kali Linux on it. Looks amazing. Notice how the screen doesn't flash on the MacBook Air. Just better screen there. Not, you know, I'm sure there are probably Chromebooks or other, you know, PC laptops that don't flicker like this when you record them with a camera, but really that's not gonna affect you in your day-to-day -day use anyways. Um, so anyways, just, just a side note, getting distracted there a little bit, but uh, yeah, I did want to update you on this. I don't, I'm not going to go too into depth on Peppermint OS today, um, but I will probably be playing around with this a little bit more. Um, I did want to just give you my uh, initial impressions and, and talk about it a little bit. I haven't used this, uh, I haven't used this Chromebook a ton since, but I did install Peppermint OS and played around with it a little bit. Now, um, it is pretty nice. I I like it a lot. Um, it works better than Arch Linux, which I guess isn't just, I don't know why Arch Linux went so incredibly wrong. Um, I, I don't know why the Arch Linux install went so incredibly wrong on this thing, um, but it did and it was, uh, pr it was pretty cool. Like uh, I had a ton of issues. If you wanna see what went wrong, you can check out my last video and I could have fixed them, but I feel like just the default install of KDE should work better just out of the box. You know, given that it's not like you're compiling a packages from source, you're installing actual packages, they should work. I just feel like they should. I know, I know you're supposed to tinker with it and troubleshoot it and stuff, but I, I feel like, like up to a certain point, it should just have some basic default functionality once you install it. Um, given that it is like, that's the whole point of putting it into a package. You install these packages to, to, you know, get your graphical desktop running. Um, anyways, that, that said, um, you know, Arch Linux is pretty neat, but it did not work well on this. You could probably make it work a whole lot better, but it had quite a few issues. Um, the good news is, um, not to knock Arch Linux or anything like that. Um, I still plan on tinkering around with it quite a bit more, probably on other hardware. Um, and it, I, you know, I still, uh, I don't want to knock it as a distro. It's, I still think it's a terrific distro if that's your use case. And if you need bleeding, you know, bleeding edge stuff, um, this is a Peppermint OS is a lightweight, nice, uh, a nice looking, very functional and lightweight, um, Linux distro. It's pretty nice. It's working pretty well on, uh, on this, uh, Chromebook right now. I'm, I'm very happy with this. It's, uh. I, a lot of the issues, um, it's been so long, I, I can barely remember them off the top of my head, but uh, like, like basically all the issues I had with Arch are not there now. This just works nicely, and maybe it's just an XFCE versus KDE thing. Maybe it's not even, maybe the blame shouldn't be placed on Arch, but on uh, KDE, on KDE. Maybe just KDE just is not up to supporting the Chromebook. Some, I don't want to say it's necessarily Arch Linux's fault or their lack of, you know, working on their packages or anything like that, um, because it may not be. In any case, um, I'm running XFCE. Maybe if I ran XFCE on Arch, uh, it would have ran better on this. I'm actually kind of curious about that at this point. But bottom line, this works great now, and I'm very happy with it. It is... Uh, 
yeah, all those issues went away. If you want to see what they were, check my old video where I, uh, it's a relatively recent video, but uh, it was, I haven't put any videos out since then or not many. And uh, yeah, so if you want to see that, you can go back and check that out. Um, but anyways, using this now, it's a little bit more functional. You can really get stuff done with this um, without worrying about those issues. This is not a powerful system, as I've said in my other videos. The Chromebook itself is not that powerful, um, but you, you can still do your daily stuff, browsing the web, typing up documents. Uh, you could use it for development and stuff. It's gonna run a little bit slower if you need to, uh, if you have a website with a ton of JavaScript on it or whatever. I, I, I don't know, but if you try to you know do video editing or, um, I mean, you could edit things, do photo editing, like graphic design and stuff with the GIMP, but if you were to try to, you know, do a lot of video editing, really any serious video editing, or, or um, you know, you're probably gonna run into issues with games and uh, there, there are gonna be instances where it lags and it's it's definitely not a super powerful machine. If you wanna run like um, any virtual machines on this, like if you wanted to do Android development, you're gonna probably have some issues running the, the uh, emulators. So that's gonna be an issue. This is not like a powerful, you know, development box and not, not a powerful workstation or anything, but for what it is, um, for what a Chromebook's meant to do, it's pretty nice and I think Peppermint OS is a great choice to put on this. If you just want something small so you can carry it with you, do some research on the go, you know, like research some info in a browser and like type up documents based on it and that, that type of workflow, it works great. You wanna practice your Python programming, this works great for that too. You wanna to practice probably other types of development, this will work great for that too. You wanna to practice your Linux system and administration. You wanna use this as a console to log into servers. Great, you can do all of that stuff. You wanna do, you know, we do cloud development and manage stuff in the cloud. This will work great on that too. Um, so yeah, that that is basically where I am. This is about all I wanted to show you. It does come with some nice stuff by default. Um, I forget if I had to select Audacity or, or, or not, but it is on there. Comes with the GIMP. Um, flame shot for taking screenshots and stuff. Let me just load this up just to show the functionality, just to give you, uh, it, the GIMP is not known for uh, loading quickly, but uh, yeah, on any hardware really, but this, uh, yeah, I'm gonna discard that. All right, yeah, but that loaded up relatively quickly. That was not bad at all. So open a new image. Um, you know, you can paint things and stuff. You can put an actual photo in there and do like the photo editing. And this flickering, you're not gonna, see, I'm not, when I look at this with my eyes, I don't see this flickering. The flickering you see in the video, that's just cause I'm, that's just how this screen looks on my camera. But uh, it doesn't actually look like that when I look at it. So don't look at this flickering and say, oh, I could never work on something like that. Um, just imagine it like this, but without the flickering. But you, you can see how you could actually get real work done. Um, I'm gonna open up Chrome. Yeah, so here we go. So, and I do not, oh, I hate this. Do not wanna unlock my key ring. I shouldn't have to, I don't know why that, I don't use this key ring. Any case. Um, don't wanna restore pages at the moment. Um, yeah, so this is my Google Chrome paused, I guess. I guess I paused updates, um, but Google Chrome loads pretty nicely. You can do like a graphic design and stuff. So all, you know, a lot of daily stuff, if that's the type of stuff you work on, you could spend $35 on a Chromebook like this. And uh, if you wanna go through the process, you could look at my other videos showing you how to install Linux on this and you could, you could get Peppermint OS running on here. And I, I think Ubuntu would actually, I only kept it on here briefly, but I believe Ubuntu was working nicely too. So Ubuntu, Peppermint OS, they work great. Arch Linux didn't have the same luck with it, but who knows, maybe it would work great if you installed XFCE and you wanna go through the Arch install process. So that is my update for today. If you know something that I don't know, leave a comment down below, not just for me, but you know, as always for the next person who comes along, they might wanna know too. Um, any comments, questions, criticisms, you know, comment down below. You might want to give me a thumbs up. might want to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on a lot of our other great content we have coming up. A lot of 3D printing, a lot of, uh, you know, coding, electronics, um, you know, single board computers, Raspberry Pis, networking, taking things apart, all sorts of tech-related stuff that you're not going to want to miss out on. So hit that subscribe button. Um, yeah, I did just... Uh, 
I did just record a video on how to install Kali Linux on a MacBook Air, another interesting video, just, just as an example. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna post that video before this one or after it, but just an example. Uh, but it should be close to around the same time, but just another example of some of the great content we have coming out on this channel. You're not gonna wanna miss, so uh, not don't just hit that subscribe button, but you wanna hit the bell icon. Otherwise, YouTube won't give you notifications when we do come out with new content. So if you wanna miss anything, hit both of those. And um, hopefully someone found this interesting or even useful maybe. Um, as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys on the next video.